In this episode, I have something real special for all of you. I have three special guests, a good friends of mine, joining me to give you guys tips and tricks on how to improve your animation workflow, how you should be thinking on the job when working with other animators, and much, much more. I hope you guys enjoy it. Welcome to episode 36. Let's get to it. In this YouTube business, when you do videos every week, it's really uh, lonely to actually be here, sitting down in front of the camera, talking to a glass, and um, kind of sharing knowledge and sharing tips and tricks. As much fun as it is to actually sit here, I really miss having people around that you can bounce ideas off and talk about what do you guys think. So I've been thinking about the best way to incorporate that to my YouTube channel. So with all that being said, these three fine gentlemen that you guys are gonna see in the, in the next few minutes um, are people that I've worked with previously and are people that I admire a lot because they have a lot of talent, a lot to give. So all of this will hopefully give you a perspective of how an experienced animator, an animator that has been a lead and has been a senior for a long time, etc., how do they think and what are the things that are important to them. This episode is around workflows and how you should behave or act at work when you're actually surrounded by animators. So let's get started, introduce our first guest for this video. James Lyons, we worked together way back in the day, 10, 11 years ago, maybe. Um, and uh, James, when we worked together, he was one of the nicest and most talented animators. He has come um, very, very far since, and he uh, was a lead previously, and now he's focusing on his own business. And uh, there's a lot to be learned uh, from James. He has his own YouTube channel where he teaches animation. He also has an animation workshop and he has a way of teaching that is very, very calm. He breaks down complex subjects very, very well. So if you don't know James, make sure to check out his YouTube channel after this. So now let's listen to James dropping some knowledge on how to improve your animation workflow. Guys, it's James from How To Animate here on YouTube. I've been a professional animator for 13 years now and really happy to be sharing five animation tips with you on Harvey's channel. So tip number one, is gonna be all about communication. So there's a lot of stuff within communication, so it's gonna be quite a large tip. I'm hoping this is gonna count for two or three. Um, I think as animators, it's it's our job, really, is to communicate with the audience, okay? And we've really gotta keep in mind, as we're animating our shots, how is this gonna read? Your shot is only ever gonna be seen once. They're not gonna have the luxury of, of playing it back over multiple times. So you need to be very, very clear in your posing and your acting to communicate exactly what you want within the story. Okay, that's our primary job. And that kind of counts, you know, if you're doing a, an acting shot um, or, you know, a really high intensity action scene as well. Exactly the same principles apply here. So communication is really, really important. Now, you need to allow a bit of time between stuff as well. Um, what I found in my animation, especially recently, is you, you do you do a shot and it just seems too abrupt. There's not enough sort of space in between. This is something I've been learning recently is just to allow, just allow the, a bit of time between stuff. Not everything has to be like bang, 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 you know. It's kind of just getting different kind of rhythms within your animation. So, and that just helps the whole shot read. So another tip would be to go deeper than just movement, okay, and really sort of plan and analyze and think about a shot before you actually start it's it's really really tempting just to you know you get your assignment whatever it is you get your shot and then you just jump straight on the computer i'm guilty of this as well you know a lot of animators are it's trying to get a bit of art form into it by going away thinking about what exactly again you're trying to communicate with your audience you've got one you've got one chance to get this right so it's really important just sit down and think about what your character's objectives are and where this fits within the story. So really understand the whole story, the whole arc of the character. Just get those story beats across in a clear and concise manner. Okay, another big tip is to use video reference. Uh, I think as beginners, especially, it's really, really important to film yourself getting up and actually acting out your shots beforehand. It can be incredibly helpful 
to actually figure out the body mechanics and just to work out acting choices as well. Um, so definitely get up, get yourself uh, recorded and analyze the reference. You don't want to rotoscope it, that's not what we're trying to achieve here. Um, but it's very, very important just to go through, put it in a program like Sync Sketch and draw over exactly what's going on can really really help your shots okay guys and my final tip for you is to not animate in a bubble <laughs> okay and what I mean by that is it's really really important as animators that we share our work with other people to get their opinions uh, how you view your work is not necessarily how other people will get someone preferably more experienced than you are to look over your work um, it's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking your work is just the best thing ever there's always room for improvement so it's it's important to get a mentor of some sort be that in a workplace environment or you know if you're a student just starting out uh, by far the best way to learn is to get someone that knows what they're doing to help you out and teach you so i hope you guys found these tips helpful So now we have Elliot. Elliot is the lead animator at Creative Assembly, um, where they do games such as Warhammer, Rome, and much, much more. And uh, I worked for that company for quite a bit, and uh, uh, Elliot and I kicked it off, and he's an, an amazing guy. Once again, great talent. When I was there, he was not the lead, but because of his raw talent, he actually made it up to a lead position, rightfully so. He has many, many years of experience. So listen to Elliot and what he has to share next. Hi, uh, um, I'm uh, Elliot, uh, lead animator at uh, Creative Assembly um, on Total Warhammer. Uh, I've been an animator for uh, eight years now, wow. <laughs> so um, yeah, Harvey has tips for a better animation workflow. Obviously very vast subject. My first tip would be a really boring one, a good planning. Uh, mainly by that I mean knowing what you're gonna do. In my opinion it's super important for a fast workflow, so don't start before you know what you want to do. You gotta find an idea that creates that itch in you. Uh, you gotta be so eager to start that you almost can't even finish your thumbnails and your board research. Um, if you manage to be in this state of mind, uh, then you know you're gonna probably have a lot of energy to do this animation and this is good <laughs> you know we all know that person that has a huge uh, cinematography or game culture right so uh, go talk to them for me this person is dave um, uh, you show him a character and your rough plan for this animation and uh, and he'll tell you oh oh man man you gotta go check this scene in this movie and uh, and then you go check this out so um yeah you gotta find your dave find a dave somewhere tip number two um ref or no ref having good reference is gonna make you animate a uh, super quick uh, super quick um but no reference is also very very fun and, and interesting you learn a lot by doing that definitely more challenging so i would say if you are in a professional environment definitely work with a ref also obviously don't uh, i mean uh, skip the ref if you are super comfortable with the body mechanic of what you're animating tip three uh, focus on the flow of of, uh, of an animation first so uh, sell the idea first and then the details so like um is it clear um does it feel good uh is it organic uh you know this sort of stuff is the timing interesting and you know usually the answer isn't necessary making it more complex or adding new stuff to it it's most of the time actually simplifying or playing with the timing in a different manner uh, and then you can worry about polishing and and don't forget polishing will make your animation better for sure but perhaps only 10% better. So tip number four, um, again, a, a really common one, but like scripts and shortcuts, get the right tools for your workflow. Um, are you blocking in steps? Um, then you're probably gonna need some good ghosting tools, uh, ghosting scripts to help. Um, you're blocking in spline, then you're gonna need some smart way of changing um, really quickly tensions in the graph. Um, if you use reference a lot, uh, then you better find a good workflow to use video reference. And then obviously good, um, good keyboard shortcuts. And those are different for everyone, right? It depends on what you use and, and how you put your fingers on the keyboard. And don't forget that you are after the fast iteration 
to find that that smooth and 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 good flow for your animation so anything that's gonna help yeah my teacher always said you don't start building a house with like moldings and decoration uh you put the foundation first and build your way up so uh same for animation uh tip five work as cleanly as possible um this one's definitely the most boring of all but this applies to all fields not only animation trust me if you if something you've made isn't clean then it will come back and haunt you later yeah i think very lastly watch a lot of animators try their workflow uh, but don't think that um your animation suck because you are not using the same workflow there's no good or bad workflow do whatever works for you i hope that's gonna be helpful and uh, like and subscribe to Harvey's channel because uh, this is pure gold and uh, listen to what he has to say and um, and, uh, and yeah, good luck guys. And last but definitely not least, we have Gab. Uh, he is a senior animator at Kojima Productions and he just wrapped up uh, Death Stranding. Um, he now lives in Japan with his wife and um, I met Gab at Creative Assembly as well. He was an incredibly, incredibly talented animator that was there for a very long time. So I have a lot of respect for Gab for the things that he achieved and especially for the latest work that he has done just now on Death Stranding because that game looks incredibly polished. I'm playing it right now and I'm loving every single second of it. So there's a lot to be learned from Gab. So listen to what he has to say next. Hi, my name is Gabriele Cohen. I'm, uh, I'm Italian. I'm an animator at Kojima Productions. Uh, I previously worked at Ubisoft and Creative Assembly. I've been working professionally for, I don't know, 12 years, about. Uh, and Harvey asked me to like give some tips. I'm actually currently uh, traveling around the world, so uh, it's gonna be a really quick short one from the car. Um, uh, my tip would be don't get too attached to your work, both in a macro and micro level. Uh, and a micro level, let's say, don't get too attached to your animation keys. Uh, like a lot of times, uh, especially uh, maybe younger animators, uh, when you do something, like you do an animation, and maybe there is a part that doesn't really convince you, but uh, you feel like you don't want to lose uh, what you've done because you, it, it took a lot of time to do something. Uh, so you try to fix it in some way uh, and you actually tend to waste a lot of time trying things this way When I redo something you know, it almost always comes out better and on a macro level more general level I'd say uh, When you work in a team and it, it happened really a lot like maybe for the first time to me on this uh, On this project on that stranding uh, because we really worked as a team and we were on a pretty tight schedule uh, It happens a lot that other people will have to touch your work or you'll have to touch other people's work or a character you are like in charge of uh, someone else will have to add some animations to it because you can't do anything by yourself because there is no time for example the important thing is the the result in the game the, the final result in the game i know a, a lot of time you do animation thinking uh, i want to put this on my reel and and so it has to be all done by me uh, so you just have to let it go don't don't get too attached uh, to your stuff and and trust the other team people in your team so yeah i guess that is my uh quick tip from today from the car and see you and thank you harvey for letting me join this project see you The first tip that I have for you guys in order to improve your animation workflow when you are at work, when you're ready to get started, is to set up your Maya so it is your own. Make sure that it's comfortable, put all your windows where you need them to be for you, for the individual. So a second tip is to set up keyboard shortcuts. Um, they might sound like a pain to set up, especially if you're not used to doing shortcuts. Maybe you just finished your university or your course. You're used to using Maya vanilla as it is. But if you go to the pain of setting up your keyboard shortcuts, getting used to them, then there's no going back to just working with the default shortcuts that Maya gives you. Um, everyone is different on this subject too, so make sure you set up your keyboard shortcuts to match your own needs. Check out my video on Maya setup if you need more information about this. Now, uh, the last three are all about 
animation, polish, and how to get there. First tip is to take your time, chill, and really, really hone in on the planning of your shot. Planning your shot is by far the most important thing you can do, so make sure you plan your shots. Do storyboards if you need to, to make sure that once you go in and start animating, that you have a really clear idea of what you're going to animate. Number four is straight out after planning, and that is to set up your poses and set up your poses incredibly strong. So after you've done your planning, now you're doing your poses and the poses need to sing. Every single pose you make, take your time. Don't think that because it's just a pose that you can do it quickly in just an hour or two and then you can move on to the next one. Take your time to really craft your poses. I like to think of myself as a sculptor. You know how long they take to actually kind of carve out a statue out of a stone. Think about it that way. Look at every angle, every like, every every different pose, every finger. Just set up your poses, set them up strong, and then it's gonna make your life so much easier later when you're actually polishing. And then the last tip, it is about polishing. Um, polishing. Uh, instead of you rushing your animations in order to get to the polish because it's the most fun, that's what happens with most animators. They just rush it and then they want to hit that spline button and then they start kind of playing with the spline because now they can see the interpolation between all the keys. Well, think more about it this way. If you set up your strong base, your pillars per se, of your animation. If you set them up strong with nice planning, nice poses, and you've created like really a nice sequence, you're gonna be super excited about what you're gonna do next. So therefore, by the time you get to the polish, it's gonna feel like a, a nice to have, like a, mm, this is gonna be great. Um, so see it almost like candy. Uh, this is the stuff that actually you've been working all this time to do, and then you can just relax and do it. So uh, some of this stuff already has been echoed by uh, the other three animators, but it is very true, especially when you're in a fast work environment and you need to get work done really, really quickly. Skipping the planning and skipping the posing is the worst thing you can do. And that is the number one thing that animators do when they start working is to actually, I don't have time to plan, I don't have time to pose right, I'm just gonna go straight into the final interpolation of the animation because that's where the animation is and in reality it is not the animation is actually in every single step before that and if you just focus on the last one the animation is definitely going to be mush so that was my five tips for improving your animation workflow So this episode was really uh, enjoyable to do. Uh, most of the time I have to think about the idea of the episode, write down some of the stuff that I want to accomplish. And it's all about me and me and how do I do it and all that stuff. So for me to reach out to some of my best mates in animation, people that I've worked with before, people that I admire, and be like, would you guys want to be in my video? <laughs> and they're going, yes, that would be amazing. Like, really, thank you very much. That experience was really humbling to me. And uh, I think for the very first time, I understood how important the channel has become because uh, to me, no nothing I do, I feel like it should matter too much. It's just, I just feel like it's just me doing some stuff. Like, uh, it's just me. <laughs> so I wanna thank uh, Elliot, I wanna thank Gab, and I wanna thank James for joining me in this video. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Um, and uh, I hope to make this a series because uh, when you start, in the industry, genuinely it feels like there's so many things that you should know before you join. So um, having more people joining this channel and actually giving you guys a shout about some of the stuff to look out for or some of the stuff that you should definitely be thinking about when joining a workforce or joining a team, um, I think is incredibly valuable. So that's all I had for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and until next week, have a great time guys, see you then, and don't forget, as always, stay well, stay safe, peace! You still around? Great! In that case, click here to watch more episodes, or click here in order to subscribe to my channel. I thank you deeply, I appreciate it, and I hope to see you next week when I drop more videos here in this channel. See you then.